Welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. Today we're going to be installing this lithium battery behind me. As you can see, it's something that we haven't done yet and today's the day. So we're going to get started. We're going to be installing everything in the front uh, bay there in front of the door and um, probably not going to videotape the entire thing because it'll get kind of tedious, but we will do a walkthrough of how everything's set up and we'll get started. Now, as I get this battery installed, there's a couple of things that I needed to remember with lithium batteries. They have a different charge profile than the standard lead acid batteries that might be in your RV to begin with. So if you're upgrading from a lead acid, whether it's AGM, you know, flooded or even a gel cell and you're moving to lithium, they have that different charge profile. So there's a very good chance that you may need to get a new uh, charger for that battery. We decided to bump down in amperage on this uh, to 60 amps from a 65, basically so that if we ever end up in a situation where we have a site that doesn't have good 30 amp power or 50 amp power, we can still plug this in directly to the pedestal using an extension cord and still get those batteries charged. Now, a couple other things that I got, uh, battery monitors, everyone knows Maybe you don't. Uh, battery monitors give you a bit of information about the lifespan of your battery, the state of charge, and how long approximately you may have left on the battery. So I did get a physical one, even though this is a Bluetooth model. I wasn't completely sure how well this Bluetooth was going to do, so I went ahead with the physical one as well. Now, essentially, these battery monitors all require the installation of this little bit which is called a shunt and what this does is it monitors the flow of ele electrons across this gap here and that's how it reports back to the monitor what's going on this goes in between your negative terminal of your battery and the rest of your electrical system so it can capture every drop of power that's going across that terminal so that is how it, in short, the battery monitor can tell you more information about your state of charge. I also grabbed, in order to make the install a little bit easier, a couple of heavy duty bus bars. These are 300 amps, uh, 300 amp model, so it allows me to effectively use this 200 amp hour uh, continuous discharge battery and not have any concerns about the amount of energy going across and melting the bus bar. So you do need to size these in line with everything else in your system. Think of it like you protect your wires with fuses and they need to be sized right. Your bus bars and even your shunts need to be sized right. The one that came with this monitor uh, supports up to 500 amps. So I don't think I'll be exceeding that. So I think that one will be just fine. And then uh, I did get a couple extra circuit breakers. Uh, and inline fuses. Uh, the circuit breaker I intend to put on the output of the positive terminal of the battery so that if I need to turn battery power off, it's really easy. I don't have to get any tools out. Also, if it pulls too much power, that will trip and I won't have to replace a fuse. So again, a uh, circuit breaker for that purpose. Uh, the rest of the electronics that are going to be protected, you know, like the battery charger the dc to dc i'll still have a fuse for that this will go in between my distribution block and the inverter so every all the wires are going to be protected all of the components are going to be protected and even this one is protected it's got a series of fuses here that make sure that it's uh protected itself so all my electrical system all my dc electrical should be protected by the end of this project if it's not already you know sometimes i take some shortcuts this time i'm making sure i don't do that and so those are the parts that's going to get installed and this is the 99 percent finished project so we have our 200 amp lithium battery here connected with a very short lead directly to what is that thing called again the shunt this wire goes up to the display inside which we'll show you in a moment and this provides power so that the display itself is powered 
From there, I go to a uh, bus bar. I got these ones on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link to these down below. These are 300 amp rated as we talked about and I like it because everything is covered. So I don't have anything coming out of, um, you know, nothing's wide open. From there, I have a very short lead for our Ames 2000 watt power inverter. And also I have a lead coming up to our DC to DC battery charger. Now, because this is lithium, we do have to modify the settings on that charger so that it recognizes it as lithium and uses the correct charge profile. Also, uh, this line right here is going up to our new lithium capable converter, sorry, uh, yeah, battery charger slash converter, which is plugged in right here. And it's plugged in right there because I don't want to run this off of the inverter because that would create a negative battery loop. And so it's tied in to the shore power inside this transfer switch. And uh, I also have a lead here, which comes across and is a terminal for other um, smaller draw accessories, as well as I chose to get some uh, terminals that were not behind this cover because that takes screws to get off. But this allows me to connect my Viair air compressor right here. So if I need to fill up the tires or whatever, I have some terminals right there. They're separated by a little bit of distance so that the alligator clamps will not um, well, contact each other. But this is part of the 90 or the 1% that's not done. I have some uh, covers on order so that those are covered uh, while we're in transit. Now from the positive side, I have two wires off coming off the battery, uh, battery itself. And there's two good reasons for this. Number one, uh, if I draw too much power on this while we're traveling, then if I was on this breaker, there's a potential that our emergency brakes on the trailer would not work. So I added a second lead that goes to this connection. And I'm going to take this cap off so you can see what's going on here. So I do also have this set up where none of this is fused. Uh, this wire and this wire are not fused, but this is an auto reset breaker for this slightly larger wire. So this white wire is the brake uh, uh, aux emergency brake cable. So I want that to be good to go. Um, I don't want anything with this to trip that. So uh, the braking system does require a direct connection to the battery. Let me know in the comments down below if you think that's a bad idea to not have this fused. Um, I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, the other thing is the, um, this is the wire for our carbon monoxide or carbon, yeah, carbon monoxide and propane detector. And so that one is also on the always on feature. This is a 40 amp, um, auto breaker thing. So it likely would not protect this wire anyways. So I don't know how much gain there would be from having this on the opposite side. The rest of the power does go through a 200 amp circuit breaker. And this is something that I got from Blue Sea Systems. And it's got 5 16th terminals on either side. And I'm running one out gauge cable through all of this. Also, uh, another of the same bus bar that I had for the uh, negative lines. And that is, well, red power. So red and black. From there, I have a uh, fuse that goes up to the DC to DC charger. So if anything weird happens here, there's some protection. Um, 
Let me know if you think I've got this backwards. I'm curious to see your thoughts. Should I have this fuse closer to the battery charger? We're only talking a couple of feet anyways. I don't know what gain it's going to give us. If it were different, let me know. I also have a 200 amp fuse line going to my power inverter. So kind of double protected. If there's too much draw over everything, the breaker will trip. If this draws too much, it will trip that 200 amp uh, fuse right there. Also have the power line going from the, uh, the charger. And again, I don't have a, a fuse on this. I don't know if I should. Um, I'm not a professional. I just did what I think was right. I see these fuses here and I feel like that's the way it should be. I don't know. Um, and then I also have two lines going up and wrapped in this, um, which is called the kink tubing or whatever. And that goes to our power center uh, that runs the whole RV. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Ah, this line. This is the power line for the terminals over here. And this is another part of that 99% that, or 1% uh, that's not done. Um, I wanted to keep these covered for now, which, all right. I uh, just wanted to keep them covered for now uh, so that nothing can span that. But I need to figure out how to cover that, which I have on order another one of these type of things so that we can just cover that up. Uh, this, this is the actual line, so a positive and negative lead. So that negative lead does come into this box. It's kind of buried behind one of these things. No, it doesn't come from this box. It, it's grounded directly to the frame below. So that is all um, uh, full circuit on its own. And this one not goes to the frame down below as well. So that's how all of this stuff gets grounded. Uh, it's bonded to the frame. The display line, I just kind of wrapped around the power lines here. So that follows back. Now the battery we got is a Bluetooth model and It shows us some information about what's going on, what's the rate of charge, what's the current. Um, it appears that, yeah, there's no charge going right now. Um, so, you know, whatever 12 volt is going on inside, um, it will show us. So this is kind of a geek out thing. Um, you know, I, I'll be curious to see what happens when we're on the road and we've got the fridge going and we've got the uh, DC to DC charge going and all that stuff. Really just kind of a geek out thing. It does show you um, what uh, remaining time and everything is. So it gives you individual details about each cell that's in the battery. I don't know. Um, good enough for me. Uh, I don't know what benefits this app is really going to have until we actually get on the road and we're not connected to power. And this is the display panel. So the display panel tells us all the same information that the app does, but it's a physical connection. I wanted to utilize the panel um, because... I wasn't sure how well the Bluetooth integration was going to be when the battery is 100% charged and there's no charge going to it and no draw really coming out of it. It will dim out when it's charging. It kind of does this flash on off kind of thing. And you have the ability to turn that light on whenever you want. And there is the configuration settings and I am finding that it's having a hard time focusing on that. But you get to set your capacity for how much amp hours you have in your battery bank and what you want it to alarm you at. Um, what's the highest voltage? What's the lowest voltage? 
and when it should alarm you so that you know. Of course, that only works if you're actually in here because the alarm is built into this panel. So just something to know. And this tells you how many hours it has left in the battery based on your current usage rate. I've done some initial testing on it. We'll do more uh, as time goes on and figure out how our battery usage really works. But so far, the install is complete and I'm happy with the way it looks. Thanks for watching, guys. This is the end.